So I'm ready to introduce to you our second storyteller. He is joining us from Perth, Australia. If you can believe it, it is one after 1 a.m. for him. Um, his name is Kun Kunaraksa. He is a 40 under 40 Asian Australian award winner. Six months ago, he dug into his own family history and what he discovered changed his life forever. Since then, he's been sharing his extremely rare life experience. Please welcome to the screen, Kun Kunaraksa. <laughs> My mom was physically disabled since I was born, but despite her condition, she always put me on her lap and gave me the biggest hugs and kisses on my birthdays. So my mom wheelchairs became one of my favorite chairs. But as a child, I, was, I felt embarrassed every time my friend knew that I had a handicap. While my other friend's mom, they would go to salon for shopping my mom had to go for physical therapy fighting to walk again i remember every parent teacher conference i always pray i always pray that my mom wouldn't want to come to my school i was just afraid i was afraid that my friend would think that she's an alien because her facial uh, facial palsy so basically i lied every single time that my mom was sick or was unavailable, so my auntie, Auntie Tum, would attend instead. My mom knew about this from Auntie Tum, but she never said anything to me. So basically, I hated my life so much. I hated it because I had to lie about my mom's condition. Fast forward to 2014, after my wife and I got married, we decided to move to the U.S. Everyone, including my friends, my cousin, my neighbors, they all disagree with our decision. Auntie Tum, she asked me, why would I want to move from living in a house to in a small, tiny apartment, like a closet in San Francisco? Why would I pay $3,000 for that, to live in a place like that? But if I pay the same amount in Bangkok, I could live at a condo at the top of the floor, overseeing the river or why would I want to do the laundry go for go grocery shopping or cleaning the house by myself but if I were in Bangkok I had someone I had a uh, housekeeper to do it for me and there was my uh, father and mother-in-law they always asked me about how about the health insurance do you have health insurance I didn't have that we didn't have that all we had was trust and some money in the bank account and I remember it was November 2014. Um, it was on a very hot day. And my mom and I had a conversation about me moving to the US. And I went into her room and I sat down on, the, on her bed next to her because she was sitting in uh, the wheelchair. And we start talking and she grabbed my hand and she said this, Kun, just do it. If I were you, I would do it. I know, I know it's your American dream. And it's the same with me. Like I moved to Australia 40 years ago. It was my Australian dream. And then I realized, oh, the, my mom was the only one who is very supportive for, the, uh, for my decision moving to the US. So after that, my wife and I, we moved to San Francisco and settled down. We got jobs and everything went well. But it was into, in, in late 2015, uh, I was in Jakarta, Indonesia for work, and it was my 30th birthday. And I got this phone call from Auntie Tum. She told me that my mom got a stroke and I had less than 48 hours to be with her and had to, had to make the toughest decision in my life, either to let her go under surgery with only 25% survival rate. But if she survived, it's likely that she will be paralyzed for the rest of her life or skip the surgery. 
my brother and father passed away, passed away already at the time. So I didn't know what to do. I was lost. So I started asking my aunties, including Auntie Tum, what should I do? And all they told me was, Kun, you're an adult now. You can make your own decision. And I did. I decided to skip the surgery and decided to get her uh, to donate some of her organs, including two eye lenses, two kidneys, and a liver. But in order to do that, the doctor needed to do further examination on her to make sure that the core brain is completely dead. And there was a need for three confirmation to, to confirm that the core brain is dead. The first two times came so easy, it was like amazing. But the third time, we attempted like for five times, but it was a no. And the doctor told me, Kun, if the next uh, examination is a no, we can't donate her organ anymore. I was like, did I make the wrong decision? What would my mom decide to do if it was her? All this thought just like went into my mind. So I sit, sat down and I talked to my childhood nanny, this, uh, brainstorming what should I do? And I did this. I sat next to the bed that she was laying down and I hold her hand and I whisper this to her. Mama, kun okay lo na? Mai tong ben huang lao. Kun mi kim lao, ta ya japai ka pai lei. Ta kho hai an to pai nia ben chai na. It means, mom, I'm okay now. I'm all good. I have Kim, my lovely wife. If you want to go, please go and want, please make the next confirmation to be yes. And the next yes just came like that. At this point, I realized my mom was fighting for me until the last second. She wanted to know that I was okay. But after my mom passed away, I still carry the shame of me feeling embarrassed of her being my mom compared to the love that she had for me. Not until last November that I step on the stage in Bali, Indonesia to, to show a picture of me with her at my graduation ceremony during a talk that I did about how family facts set me free.